Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Um, on behalf of Wild Analysis and ANSYS, thank you for joining us for today's webinar. Uh, my name is James Latham. I'm sort of host and moderator today. And my colleague, David Faber, who's a member of our technical team, will be talking us through today's topic on understanding ANSYS Elastic Currency and the ANSYS Cloud. You do the next slide, David. Cheers. Um, <laughs> So we're going to split the agenda into two sections. Uh, firstly, we're going to be looking at what elastic currency is, uh, how to run it, the advantages and what's available with AECs. This is a slightly different approach about how we might use these. Uh, second slide. And then second, uh, second section, it will be sort of um, moving that elastic currency and how that relates to being able to utilize those with ANSYS Cloud benefits, um, where you can use it, a little run through of, of how it looks and how it operates. OK, next slide, please. Thank you. So just a little bit about wild analysis quickly for some of you that, uh, that maybe don't know. Um, so we're an independent company and a multi solution provider. As you can see, we we run a different uh, sort of different business units. Um, we think our key strength or our key strength is the skilled, uh, our skilled and experienced technical and commercial team that we have. Um, we sort of couple this with the best in class portfolio of analysis tools. So we're very focused on on that area. OK, next slide, please. So why are we here really? Well, we want to discuss how project focus and change impacts the resources on a company in terms of software and hardware. And this is something we experience quite a lot in wild analysis in our consultancy team because we see the project's timeframes and change the, the demand in that project changes. It increases our requirements um, and and this puts pressure on our hardware, software, etc. And these are all issues that we have to work with. Um, so for us and some of our customers being flexible to meet these demands um, is really helpful. And so today we want to introduce, introduce how ANSYS Elastic Currency and ANSYS Cloud can help you in this. Also, we've had some discussions and there's some uh, um, reporting from ANSYS about the use on their licenses. So I just wanted to share this with you really. Um, so about three quarters of uh, the users are often compromising what they can do on a project because they don't access, have access to hardware or the software they, that they need. And the impact is then obviously that sort of 75% again are not really utilizing the tools that they have to the best of their capabilities. So what we've got here is with Elastic Currency or Elast ANSYS Cloud, we've got a way of, of addressing this. And with the currency or the Elastic Currency, we're really looking at two levels of flexibility from the one product. So I'd like to pass you over to David Faber. Thank you very much. Thank you for that, James. So, hi everyone. My name's David. Um, I'm one of the engineers at Wild Analysis, and as James mentioned, today I'm going to be talking to you about Ansys Elastic Currency, Ansys Cloud, and how the two are related. So, time, hardware, and access to software have consistently been major determining factors when considering simulation throughput and modeling capabilities. As James mentioned, a recent survey of ANSYS users found that up to 75% of users compromise in some way due to a lack of one of these three factors. This means up to 75% of users are not utilising the software they already have access to, to its full capabilities. And this is where ANSYS Elastic Currency, also known as AEC, and ANSYS Cloud come into play. While for many users, the purchase of a 20 to £100,000 server is impractical or simply doesn't make fiscal sense if you're only using it for 10% of the year. Through the use of AEC and ANSYS Cloud, users have access to a flexible resource pool to allow them to meet demand peaks. This can be due to, say, a sudden influx of orders or simulation demands, or simply requiring further fidelity in a study that's already existing. Um, and this need for further fidelity takes the simulation beyond current solver capacity. So whether that's due to the solver level you have access to, for example, if you only have access to Mechanical Pro and you require Mechanical Premium features, or whether that's due to hardware requirements. So AEC is what ties this all together, giving users the flexibility to make the most of the software or the hardware that they already possess. 
And as James mentioned, they're providing two levels of flexibility from a single product, and that's what we're going to be looking at in further detail today. So what actually is Ansys Elastic Currency? So AEC is a type of currency that allows users to pull licenses from a pool at a product specific fixed rate per hour. So AEC provides access to all the physics and solver levels offered by Ansys, meaning users are no longer restricted by the limits of their leased or paid up licenses. This includes access to additional HPC packages, additional physics, additional solver le levels, or simply additional seats as and when required. AEC also provides access to additional hardware when combined with a cloud subscription, something we'll discuss a little bit more later on today. Elastic currency can be used in tandem with traditional licenses as well, so this can work as kind of an overflow or a backup option. In this case, the traditional licenses will be consumed first and should demand exceed the capacity of the traditional licenses, say you've got four seats and you need five, AEC will then be consumed to ensure productivity levels are maintained and demand can be met. One of the key benefits of this approach is the ability to interrogate usage through the licensing portal. So you give an insight into what software is being used and for how long, and then this can then inform decisions going forward regarding the purchase of traditional licenses. So if you're seeing that your elastic currency usage, you're consistently using five seats um, and you're using a lot of elastic currency doing this, you can then see that that's happening and you can then next time it comes to reviewing your licenses, potentially purchase an extra seat when it comes to your traditional license instead. But as mentioned, Ansys Elastic Currency offers access to the whole Ansys portfolio. This includes geometry interfaces, optimization, pre, post, solvers and HPC packs. All items may be checked out on demand at a product specific AEC per hour. This ensures that no matter what simulation requirements come up, you're equipped to handle it without having to commit to long term license agreements. So if you mainly work in mechanical areas and you get a job that requires maybe a different physics, um, you'd be able to use your AEC to check out, say, a fluent license, for, for example, um, without having to commit to a long term fluent license. Using AEC on a local machine is a straightforward process. So when a currency pack is purchased, the user will be, able, will be supplied with an ID and a PIN. This is then entered into the Elastic Licensing Portal by the administrator and the credentials can then be exported, as shown in the first two images on this page. The end user through the Ansys client license and settings is able to import these credentials and access the elastic currency in the same manner as accessing a standard license. As mentioned previously, when utilizing AEC as an overflow measure or in tandem with traditional licenses, any traditional licenses will first be consumed and it's only when you're requesting more than your traditional licenses are kind of suited for that the elastic currency is then consumed. Now, hopefully, there's kind of a decent idea of what the benefits and advantages of AEC already are. Providing both users and administrators with a variety of tools to ensure productivity and team performance remains flexible and able to keep up with demand. This is achieved without requiring large capital outlay or without requiring meetings where you have to discuss kind of whether you need another license. Um, in the way that traditional licenses require. This is because AEC allows for a sort of pay as you play approach. This combined with access to all physics, solver levels and hardware requirements ensures that no matter what the demands are, there is capacity available. As the ability to meet higher and higher peaks of demand increases, hopefully your base demand also increases, allowing for organic, organic growth of simulation business and capabilities. So, in this first section, we've discussed how Ansys Elastic Currency may be utilised locally within a department or business to provide flexibility through access to additional licensing capabilities on already purchased hardware. So everything we've just discussed so far has been local use of licences on hardware that you already have. So this is the first level of flexibility that's provided by AEC. And hopefully we can see that this level of flexibility is substantial with the one remaining limiting factor being the hardware available on site. So at the minute, everything we've talked about is being restricted to the hardware you currently have available to yourself. And this is where Ansys Cloud comes in. So the role of Ansys Cloud is to overcome this final hurdle, further increasing capacity and flexibility. And the best part is it still uses the exact same product. So once more, Ansys Elastic Currency 
in tandem with an Essentials Cloud subscription is the product used to increase flexibility, remove barriers to adoption and meet new demand, all while providing usage data, portability and the same pay as you play approach that we saw previously. Um, we'll just pause for just a moment, just in case anybody has any questions about kind of AAC before we move on to talking about cloud a little bit more specifically. I think we should be OK. If not, we can save any questions till the end. Cool, we'll move on. So talking a little bit more about AEC and Ansys Cloud and what exactly is the link between the two? So Ansys Cloud is the aforementioned second level of flexibility that AEC provides. When purchasing a pack of AEC, this credit may be used either locally, as discussed in the previous section, or when accessing Ansys products in Ansys Cloud. So the exact same product and purchase pack may be seamlessly between these two platforms. Ansys Cloud provides access to specialized, high-performance HPC clusters with a variety of configurations, machine sizes, and access operations available to the user. This allows for the use of Ansys software to its full capabilities, removing the need to compromise on model fidelity, size, or physics aspects that are deemed too computationally, time, or resource intensive for local hardware options. To access cloud, so mentioned it a little bit beforehand, but we'll talk about it a little bit more. So to access cloud, you also need to have an Essentials Cloud subscription. So alongside Ansys currency, we also need this extra subscription as well. So this is your ticket to Ansys Cloud, so to speak. It's what gives you your Ansys Cloud account. And this may be purchased in either three or 12 months blocks and includes access to technical support, storage, uh, data transfer to and from the cloud, and then also, most importantly, access to cloud hardware as well. So why do we think that cloud is actually really needed? And what are the challenges that people are seeing kind of that makes cloud seem like it makes sense? So according to the survey discussed at the start of this presentation, 52% of respondents stated their main business challenge is to reduce design cycle times. Benefits of simulation in this process are pretty well documented at this point, eliminating the need for physical testing and allowing for a wide range of designs to be evaluated rapidly. However, as simulation capabilities and demands for this type of assessment grow, are companies keeping up with the hardware and software requirements to ensure this process is unhindered? Well, based on the survey, probably not. So 25% of respondents are currently solving on no more than four cores. And subsequently, 21% of respondents say that most simulations require nine hours or more to complete. So if you think if, if you happen to kind of spend half a day working on a job and you submit your job at lunchtime, you've essentially got half a day's downtime for an engineer where you're just waiting for a run to complete if there isn't much else to do in between. So that's quite a lot of downtime between runs. It's also a long time to wait and see if something's gone wrong. <laughs> but yeah. So Ansys Cloud is looking to change this by allowing for the reduction in run times and the increase in throughput as more jobs may be ran concurrently, subsequently relieving pressure on local IT infrastructure, all while allowing for further fidelity and higher quality simulations, and then subsequently providing access to further physics as well. So hopefully the benefits are kind of easy to see. So through the use of Ansys Elastic Currency and Ansys Cloud, Simulation capabilities and company growth can occur together organically rather than in discrete steps. For example, should demand increase over a time period to the extent that further license seats or a new server is required, the decision must be made on whether this purchase is necessary. Upon the purchase of this additional capacity, it may take some time before this is fully utilised, over which time any additional hardware that has been purchased may have become a little bit outdated not so much obsolete, but a little bit older and not necessarily as good value as it once was. Ansys Cloud and AEC allow for the smoothing of this curve. So increases in demand may be met instantaneously, while base demand is allowed to grow steadily. Hardware requirements become a non-issue as Ansys Cloud hardware is regularly updated. It's a managed solution and it removes excessive ongoing IT maintenance and installation costs, which sometimes total tens of thousands of pounds a year. And it also allows for the elimination of bottlenecks and subsequent delays in delivery. While also 
there's a lot of benefits here, <laughs> increase in engineer productivity. So rather than having people wait for seats to become available, you can have people constantly working on a variety of different jobs. So your team productivity also increases at the same time. And so this is kind of talking about some of the advantages, but Ansys Cloud also operates on a pay as you play basis in the same manner as when using AC locally. So with hardware in much, much the same manner as the software I discussed previously, having a fixed consumption rate per hour. Um, so this usage may be monitored again, allowing for additional insight into resource demand and usage, subsequently allowing for better informed decisions on licensing and hardware purchases going forward. So the hardware configurations available on Ansys Cloud are shown here. So each of these kind of uh, options here is currently showing the cores per node. There is also the option to check out multiple nodes when using um, cloud in different ways. So rather than having a max of 120 cores, you could have a max of say, I think it's 3,000, uh, 2,500 cores is approximately the max. Um, and then also as you have more nodes, you also have more RAM, et cetera, et cetera. So six machines have been recently added with the most recent of these being the HB V3 machine highlighted. The number of cores and memory per machine varies with each configuration subsequently having its own AEC per hour consumption rate. These machines may be accessed in a variety of ways that we're going to have a look at discussing over the coming slides. But first, we're going to talk about the three main pillars on which Ansys Cloud is built. These being workflow. So there are a number of ways of accessing cloud to allow for a workflow that best suits your requirements. These include a directly integrated workflow, a remote desktop workflow, or a command line interface, which uh, allows access to some of the program that are a little bit less suited to using cloud. Um, ah, it's not even really true. It works very well. <laughs> uh, performance. So this complete solution from solvers to the cloud was developed by Ansys for full architecture integration. So Ansys Cloud is specifically tuned for Ansys solvers. We know not only are more cores available, but the performance per core is optimized too. So often we see that running on the same number of cores on Ansys Cloud as running locally leads to increases in performance as well. And finally, support Ansys and us at Wild Analysis support the entire simulation process. So from hardware to software, from beginning to end, we're here to offer support um, in a technical manner, hardware manner, software manner. Um, yeah, there's a lot of support provided to you throughout the entire process. So a wide variety of solvers are available on Ansys Cloud, and these may be accessed in a variety of different ways. As far as version support, Ansys Cloud can support back to 2019 R2 and forward. In all cases, when utilizing software in the cloud, software is checked out using Ansys Elastic Currency in exactly the same manner as when checking out software locally. The only difference is that instead of checking out the license on a local machine, the license is being accessed on a remote machine instead. So one important thing to note, so cloud is partnered with Microsoft Azure, and so a lot of this is hosted on the Microsoft Azure servers. However, you do not need to set up anything with Microsoft directly a single vendor solution where the hardware utilizes running within an ANSYS controlled environment on Azure is provided. So you don't need to deal with anything other than the ANSYS cloud platform. Everything else is sorted out in the background. One of the advantages of this is, however, that the scale of Azure is massive. And so we have access to seven data centers globally, ensuring that for most users, you'll be able to access a data center that is relative, relatively close to your geographic location ensuring the best possible data transfer experience for all users, no matter where you are. So talking a little bit about some of the different workflows that are available. So the integrated workflow or the native desktop workflow um, is something that is available in a few of the kind of flagship programs. So Ansys Fluent, Mechanical, Electronics Desktop, among others. So this allows for pre-processing on local machines and the seamless integrated submission to Ansys Cloud in much the same way as submitting to a local RSN cluster. So this is achieved through use of the Ansys Cloud ACT extension, which is installed when you install Ansys Cloud on your local machine. Following this, following this, results may be accessed and assessed either locally by downloading of the results or within an interactive session on Ansys Cloud, which we're going to look at in a little bit more detail in just a moment. So this newly added Ansys Cloud interactive workflow is demonstrated on the next slide. We're going to go through a little demo 
and allows for both pre and post processing of problems. Um, this workflow can be adjusted to best suit you with the interactive session allowing for use advances in pretty much the same manner as working on your local machine. We're just going to have a look, little look at a bit of a demo now. So this here is the Answers Cloud portal. Um, and we're just going to start off by having a look at the dashboard. So on our dashboard, we've got kind of four main sections that we're going to consider. So we've got on the top left our resource usage section. Um, and in our resource usage, we can see that we have our account balance. We have uh, on here also our available credits. We can see the storage used. We can also see the number of concurrent jobs. You can also see below this, we've got the file transfer agent. Um, and we can see that there are a couple of file transfer agents that are activated here. So we've got the two, uh, one of which is my machine in the office and one which is my local machine. My mouse is a little bit behind me, it looks like. So I'll just give it a second to catch up. There we go, we're on the file transfer agents. <laughs> um, so we can see that there's a couple here. One's my uh, machine in the office and one's my local machine. We see that those are both are connected. We can also check the file transfer agent status by clicking on the little cloud button up in the top right, which will also show that these are connected as well, like so. Below this, we've got the installation little tab. So this is where some of the installed files for Ansys Cloud are provided. Um, however, we're going to have a look at that in a little bit more detail later on. So this is for the Windows installation. However, other installation methods are available, um, which again, we'll have a look at in a little bit more detail in just a moment. And finally, on the right hand side, we've got our jobs. So on here, we've got our five most recent jobs. So we can see that at the moment, there are two running in preparation. Um, and we can also see kind of it's an old answers example called this bolted bracket, which we're going to use to look at some features later on as well. Now, all of these can be looked at in a little bit more detail by using the tabs on the left hand side. So if I go to jobs, for example, we can see a list of all of the jobs that have been ran or are currently running. And we can see some information about all of these as well. We can also see past jobs. So we can see that there's a total of 35 on the left hand side. And the information provided here is we've got the name of our job. So we've got this bolted bracket, we're going to look at in a little bit more detail later on. The status, the start time, the finish time, the type of connection that was made. So for example, we've got an RDP connection, a VDI connection, which is in browser, or we could got a native submission here as well. So this cloud computer MAPBL is a native submission from Mechanical. You can also see that we've got our currency usage displayed here. And finally, we can see our storage usage as well. So we can see how much storage each job is using on cloud. So if we just have a little bit more of a look at this bolted bracket case, we can see some of the information that's provided when a job is run. So if we just click on the name here, we can see a variety of different information pops up. So first of all, we've got the name. We can edit the name of this job. Uh, we can see the status and we can see how long this job took to run. We've got some other options here, so we can share this job with somebody else, or we can view the results or VDI post process, which again, we're going to look at in a little bit more detail, these VDI sessions. We can see the status of the job, so we can see the time and kind of the status as the job evolves. So as the job is running, these tick off sequentially, and we can see the time at which this happened. We've got our text monitor. So the text monitor in a mechanical job is our solver output, so we can manage our job or we can monitor our job live like so. We've got a graphical monitor, which allows us to see certain residuals or plots that we choose. So at the minute, there's quite a lot on here. However, we can add a custom graph. So for example, we could look at a substep and we could choose our force criteria and our force convergence values. And again, this will update live as we're running along. We've also got a tabular monitor. The tabular monitor just provides a little bit more information on each run. So how much data was uploaded, how long has each stage of the simulation taken to run? Um, and finally, we've got our files. So when we run our simulation, our files are uploaded and backed up to the cloud. So we can see our input and output files here. Again, we can look at these files in a bit more detail on the left hand side. And we've got two tabs here. So we've got personal data and jobs data. The personal data is where I can upload files from my local machine via that um, file transfer agent to the cloud. And the jobs data is where data from my job is stored. 
conveniently. So clicking on our bolted bracket, looking at our output files, we can see the files that have been generated during the run here. Then we see our results file, which can be downloaded like so. Moving on to downloads. So this is just a little bit more kind of information on the most recent versions of Anders Cloud. So you've got a change log, we've got our Windows installation, and we've also got a zipped installation as well, which allows you to install via a command line interface. It all works in around about the same way. Um, however, if anybody is using the command line interface, please let me know and I'm more than happy to help out. Finally, the most important part for this particular demo is looking at our applications. So there's two options here, in-browser interactive session and the RDP interactive session. They're very, very similar. Um, we'll have a little bit of a talk about the exact differences in just a moment. But we can also see we've got a number of programs available. So what happens if I click on one of these programs is it just opens an interactive session, but starts with that program already open. The cloud desktop just starts with a blank window or a blank session. So we're going to look at that one for the moment and have a look at the options available to us. So first of all, we've got input files or we've got the name which we can modify. So I can either upload files to my PC or add them from that personal storage we talked about before. We've got some file transfer options where we can choose a different option depending on either the size or the number of files that we're uploading. We've got our solver settings. So you can see that we've got from 19R2 to 2021R2 here. So if we just select, oh, sorry, 2021 R1, just for a moment. And then we've also, probably most importantly, got our hardware settings. So on the right hand side, we've got our region. We're going to choose West Europe. And on here, you can see the machines that we detailed earlier. And alongside the number of cores, the amount of memory each machine has, the storage each machine has, the GPU each machine has, and finally, the consumption rate. So we talked about how using hardware uses a certain number of AEC per hour. This is just telling us the consumption rate required for checking out an individual machine. Finally, there's a couple of extra options as well. So a time limit. So if we wanted to run a job in this manner, but we didn't want it running say all weekend, we could set a time limit to make sure it ends and we're not consuming credits constantly. And finally, we've got an option to constantly upload files to the cloud storage while running. So this is just a constant backup of the files that are generated. I strongly recommend using this. So if we just go back to our dashboard quickly, we're going to look at the difference between a in-browser session and an RDP session. So this is one that's already been running. We can see that it's been running for a little while now, but we can change this to full screen and you can see it's just like a remote desktop as it is uh, when you're working kind of on your local machine. It's just in your browser um, and we can see our files and whatnot there. The second option, is the remote desktop option, which I think a lot of people are going to be quite familiar with now after working from home. Um, but you can see we've got the remote desktop session available here. Um, and if I click on Ansys 2021 R1 folder, we can see some of the files or the programs that are installed. Um, and we can access the vast majority of Ansys programs either through the in browser method or the RDP method. Um, yeah, so that's a little demo of the cloud portal. Uh, if anybody has any questions again, please feel free to include them in the chat. So moving on to the next slide, a little bit about the difference between RDP and in-browser. So there are certain advantages and benefits to each um, using Ansys Discovery as an example. So RDP provides a more immersive user experience. It's much more like working on your own machine, um, which is kind of the main thing. Um, it's a lot more native. Um, the drawback is, uh, particularly at the moment, there are issues with kind of internal business firewall restrictions or network restrictions that mean that using the RDP interface can be problematic. For this reason, the in-browser interface was developed as kind of a fallback. So if you aren't able to use the RDP session, you can use the in-browser session, which again works in very much the same way. Um, it's a little bit easier to access. You don't need to open up the RDP on your local machine. It's just in your browser. You can access it from anywhere on any device. Um, you are restricted in terms of keyboard shortcuts, but you get around these firewall or network issues that you sometimes run into with RDPs. Finally, talking a little bit about hardware use only. So a bring your own license option also exists when looking to utilize Ansys Cloud. An essential cloud subscription and AEC or AE or AHC, sorry, which we'll talk about in just a moment, are both still required for access to hardware. 
However, local licenses, be these pre-post, solver or HPC, will be consumed before utilising AEC in much the same manner as using the ANSYS Elastic Currency as a local overflow. This can reduce the cost of utilising ANSYS Cloud while still maintaining the same levels of flexibility. I mentioned briefly there a second ANSYS Curry that's available called ANSYS Hardware Currency. This currency is very, very similar to the ANSYS Elastic Currency. The only difference is, is that it can only be used to access hardware. So we can't use the ANSYS hardware currency to check out um, licenses. All we can use it for is to access hardware. So that might be useful if you're looking to bring all your own licenses. You don't want to use any of your currency on their licenses or software. And we can limit that to hardware. OK, so hopefully the advantages of ANSYS Elastic Currency in Cloud have been laid out in this presentation. However, we'll just go through a brief summary of those. So through the adoption of ANSYS Elastic Currency and Cloud, users gain access to managed and specialised hardware. This hardware is flexible and immediately available, smoothing out demand requirements and enabling organic business growth. This hardware is regularly updated and is managed by Microsoft, so there's no more expensive maintenance or installation costs to worry about. No more worrying about servers crashing or downtime. No, yeah, <laughs> and it's pretty much infinitely expandable, so you can access as much as you want. Access to these solutions is entirely portable, so the cloud portal can be accessed from anywhere in the world with no connection to company network required. And alongside this, there are a number of workflow options available, so there is a chance for each user to determine what works best for them. In addition to this, we can also use the bring your own license capabilities as well. So that if you're not interested in kind of checking out where the licenses or whatnot, this is also an option. OK, cool. That concludes this webinar. Um, I'll hand you back over to James now, who I think has a few words to say. But yeah, I hope that's been interesting and useful to everyone. Yeah, great. Thank you very much, David, for that. It was really, really good. Um, so, you know, just about to wrap up, really, but again, just to say thank you very much for uh, attending this afternoon. If you have any questions, uh, either I think use them in the Q&A session. I've unfortunately not got access to that, but we will follow up afterwards. Or you can contact us um, maybe the normal way by email with any questions. And again, uh, myself, David, or one of the other BDMs at Wild will be in touch. Um, I believe the session was recorded, so once we've sort of tidied it up, etc., we'll be making that available for you um, um, to, to get access to, and then hopefully you can review it again, um, go over some stuff that you maybe wanted a bit more clarity on, but also share it with other colleagues, etc., um, which would be great. Again, thank you very much, and uh, I'll just wrap up. That concludes today.